Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel. Our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is a joint venture uh, pioneered uh, with the foresight of Dr. Marilyn Bowie, the then president of the Digital Pathology Association, and uh, Raj Singh, who developed uh, Path Presenter. Uh, we're grateful uh, to have uh, a case today from the realm of GYN pathology, uh, a 24-year-old woman who has noted enlarging abdominal and pelvic masses. So uh, on radiograph radiography, we have two views here of her ab abdominal CT scan, and we can see this very massive uh, cystic, partly septated uh, lesion uh, with areas of uh, calcification and uh, rarefication here uh, near the pedicle. Additionally, uh, down in the pelvis, uh, the opposite ovary also appeared to show an abnormality in the form of a, a cystic lesion with areas of uh, mural calcification as well. So bilateral pelvic uh, ovarian, likely ovarian masses uh, with areas of calcification in a young woman, we would think uh, certainly of uh, teratomas, which uh, can occasionally uh, be uh, bilateral. Um, so uh, in this situation, that, uh, froze, that uh, appearance uh, mandated uh, consideration for frozen section analysis, and such indeed uh, occurred. Uh, this is a section from the large, uh, large ovarian mass, uh, almost 40 centimeter mass, uh, which as we can see shows uh, uh, a squamous epithelial lining and a fatty pedicle uh, beneath that. Um, although two sections were uh, submitted, uh, we didn't see anything more worrisome than this on frozen section. Uh, so a uh, mature teratoma diagnosis uh, rendered, um, and uh, hopefully the patient does well. Uh, here's the uh, another uh, of the frozen section uh, materials. And you can see the way that the fat cuts poorly. Uh, sometimes the uh, artifact of uh, uh, wrinkling is uh, difficult to overcome. And we also see uh, the artifact of uh, sort of ice crystallization in some of these tissues as well. But the uh, uh, epidermal structures, uh, keratin, uh, hair follicles uh, manifest in the form of the, uh, the fluid uh, that was uh, present in the mostly cystic space. Uh, so uh, one question comes ar uh, around, does the size of an ovarian tumor help us in the differential diagnosis? Um, and uh, I put together this little uh, uh, array of things to just review kind of where things fall on the overall scale of things. So usually the largest uh, uh, ovarian tumors are mucinous tumors. Um, and uh, of course, the fluid contents can be very helpful there as well, uh, but doesn't uh, help us in differentiating benign versus malignant. Uh, granulosa cell tumors can also be fairly sizable, as can germ cell tumors um, uh, in these uh, solid and potentially cystic areas, or at least follicle-like areas. Serous tumor is generally a little bit smaller, uh, but oftentimes will have papillarity or have uh, uh, granular surfaces that uh, give those clues away. Uh, teratomas also uh, tend to be of uh, uh, reasonable size. Uh, of note here, a larger tumor in a teratoma should raise consideration for an immature teratoma. So uh, we were certainly well above and beyond this. Um, and even on the uh, contralateral side, uh, our tumor was about eight centimeters. So uh, consideration uh, should have been given to uh, certainly exhaustive uh, sectioning. And in fact, uh, when the final tissues uh, were submitted and uh, multiple sections examined, we had uh, four or five slides that looked very much like this. Uh, so at low power, this is obviously of concern because it's so blue. We can see some blue cartilaginous tissue. We also see areas of necrosis, um, as well as more uh, you know, mature uh, different elements. But all of this uh, blue tissue here uh, raises uh, consideration for an immature teratoma, uh, since this is most likely a glial type tissue. Uh, and in fact, as we come into higher magnification, uh, we can see that uh, these cells are uh, forming uh, occasional little uh, rosette-like structures. Here we see one nicely right there uh, with a little pseudo rosette. 
Uh, and they're markedly accentuating around vasculature uh, and have associated areas of necrosis. So uh, this appearance, this kind of tissue in this uh, uh, sample uh, immediately pushes us into the uh, diagnosis of immature uh, teratoma. Uh, and here again, here's some more of these uh, tubule-like structures uh, that we can see here with uh, rosetting around a central uh, fibrillar core. Uh, so that establishes the diagnosis. Then the next question becomes uh, grading. And of course, here we are looking at a 1x or a 2x type magnification. Um, and the grading system is based on kind of a 4x low power field, um, which might look something uh, like uh, this. Uh, and how many of these there are per slide. Uh, we're certainly at uh, three or more uh, on this slide that have uh, this uh, significant amounts of immature tissue. So with that basis, uh, we would uh, move this into the um, uh, highest risk uh, category. So immature ovarian teratoma is usually uh, detected in the first two dec decades of life. Um, and these can present either as mass lesions, uh, uh, in this case, abdominal mass, or they may occasionally be detected uh, with uh, elevated AFP. Uh, although in that circumstance, you'd certainly be concerned also about possible germ cell tumors like uh, yolk sac tumor. As in our case, a contralateral benign uh, mature teratoma can be seen in about 10% of cases. As we've indicated, we need to see immature neural ectodermal tissue and then other immature and mature uh, embryonic tissues will be seen as well. Uh, the grading on these uh, lesions is uh, essentially a two-tiered system. Uh, Low-grade, grade one tumors have a small amount of immature neural, neural tissue defined as less than one low power field with any immature neural tissue in any one slide. High-grade tumors, obviously anything more than that. Uh, if you're a three-grade person, you look for two to three low power fields with immature neural tissue in a one slide and grade three is four or more low power fields with immature neural tissue in any one slide. And this obviously reinforces the importance for sampling. And in fact, as an anecdote, anecdotal aside here, uh, the first few sections only had one section uh, with this uh, kind of uh, tissue on them and subsequent uh, uh, retrieval of the tissue and submission of additional sections demonstrated the uh, additional uh, numerous areas and broad areas uh, with immature tissue. So our final sign out diagnosis on this case today is immature teratoma, grade three, high grade, with a contralateral mature uh, teratoma. Well, I hope that's answered some of your questions about uh, teratomas and some of the differential considerations that we may face. Um, appreciate you joining us. And as always, we invite you to subscribe so that you'll catch future releases. And we always welcome your comments if you have uh, topics you'd like us to, dis to discuss or cover or questions about uh, uh, something that I've said or shown or not said or not shown, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to uh, comment below or contact me directly. So until next time, thanks so much for joining us.